Another day, another body. That's what Charlotte's teacher in college had always said about mortuary practice, and at the time she thought she was that she was just being very literal. After all, when your entire expertise revolves around processing and preparing the dead for funeral practices, corpses are just a daily occurrence. But as she'd gotten older, Charlotte realized that it also was a mantra to keep in mind that the dead were, as a rule, in no hurry, and not to sweat rush deadlines every single day when it wasn't usually really necessary. The job would be the same day in and day out, so there was no sense in stressing over it. All that was swirling in her mind as her supervisor leaned over the desk. So, Charlotte, he said in a long, lilting drawl, we've been getting some complaints, and I was hoping you might be able to shed some light on it in advance of your performance review next month. Charlotte's eyes narrowed. Oh, certainly, sir. I was just going through my morning email threads. By the way, did you happen to catch the baseball game last night? I think the Red Sox were playing over in one of the stadiums down back on Earth. Her supervisor chuckled, then waved a hand dismissively. Oh, yes, sure, I heard about that. Much too busy with work to be able to catch any of the game. I hope everything went well, though. Mentally, Charlotte ticked off another clear and shining example that something had happened to the real Robert, and this was another damned imposter. The entire Earth arm of the Intergalactic Services Division had been having a run of issues with changelings in the department. They were parasite species, usually just a mere nuisance, but there had been some concerns from military personnel and information directors that it could pose a security risk, and so a set of recommendations for questionnaires were handed out. Charlotte had taken to trying to ask some of them to whoever it was trying to pass themselves off as Rob, and they had been failing miserably. For example, Rob was not a fan of the Red Sox. He was in fact such the opposite that he almost never missed a game involving them in order to watch them fumble, fail and make a mockery of themselves, as he liked to say. His response was abnormal to say the least, and simply the latest in a swath of similar blunders and slip-ups. She sighed, checking her inbox and seeing that there was still no reply from the Internal Human and Allied Species Resources Department, and just went back to her other tasks. She had emailed the Hassa department almost three weeks ago regarding Rob's doppelganger, but other than a boilerplate, we'll get back to your email soon. She hadn't heard anything else back. Charlotte shrugged, trying to detangle the knot in her shoulders. This new boss, while certainly not the same personality as Rob, was definitely easing off the gas for her workload quite a bit, giving her a chance to breathe and focus on her tasks chief of which was resolving this issue between the Empire and the Hive. Earth had been stuck with the Intergalactic Services Division, and for the most part it had been a fairly cushy job appointment. A lot of species found it difficult, given this wide range of services the department provided, as this tended to clash heavily with hyper-specifically evolved species, or those with rigid and inflexible caste roles and expectations. But humans were adaptable, and as a result filled in every slot in the department with little to no need for change. Case in point, the mortuary department that Charlotte and Rob had inherited from the previous member species, a race of what looked like a group of sentient puffballs that formed into larger structures in a sort of group intelligence, all while emitting a very off-putting smell of rotted bananas. Their record-keeping had been lacking, to say the least. In the case of the Empire, she wasn't sure if it had been accidentally or purposefully omitted, but there were next to no guidelines or instructions around how to process the countless dead from the Empire as they waged various skirmishes against many other members' species, as well as several of their own internal warlords who were vying for power. It had been somewhat off-putting to find that the Empire was permitted and mostly ignored with waging such frequent and widespread battle. It was seen as a quirk of the species, and that this was simply a rough patch, following the death of their sole monarch and the subsequent squabble for power. Still, she'd received numerous complaints about the Empire's dead that had been brought to the mortuary department, stored in their morgue, and processed as was recorded as the custom requested for their species. Instead, she'd received several angry emails, and in one particular case a Lord Scientist who came screaming into her office clarifying for her that the burial practices they had on record for the Empire were not only woefully out of date, but also only applicable to a small subsect of their primary religion. 
Most of the most of the current majority empire populace practiced a different sect, and while it seemed to have hardly any differences other than a few names changed here and there for primary prophets and deities to Charlotte's eyes, it did have the very explicit instruction that the dead were only to be handled by their religious functionaries, not by some minimum wage worker of another species at a distant government building. She understood their concerns and agreed with them, but unfortunately bureaucracy was, as it often was, the enemy. They had yet to submit their paperwork for such a change, and given that said change required the approval of the reigning government, this was proving to be somewhat difficult. The Empire had no officially recognized group as such following the start of their civil war, and as a result, the deceased of the Empire were still being routinely cremated per their previous instructions and returned for use in their traditional funerary dishes and meals. Charlotte at least managed to convince her supervisor to let her omit the recipe card that some idiot had thought a good idea to include, as it was clearly upsetting the already tense situation with the Empire dignitaries. An alert flashed in her monitor, and Charlotte could see that a proximity sensor had been tripped down in the morgue. On the security camera feed, Charlotte sighed as she saw another insectoid form of a hive drone being visibly shocked by the metal barricade fencing that they had installed and scuttling away. The hive had become quite irksome for her department, as they were notorious for consuming the dead as a way of honouring them and their accomplishments. The problem was, they didn't ask permission to actually do so first, and as a result, they, they had had to erect defences, as the hive had gotten into their head that the countless dead from the Empire's civil war had accomplished great deeds and had a valiant struggle, so as a result should be consumed post-haste. This meant that about every other day they had a drone or two trying to break through the perimeters. So far the electric fencing had proven quite effective, but Charlotte had actually received an angry voicemail left by one of the Hive Queens. She had complained bitterly about how insensitive this was to their cultural practices and how they would be filing a complaint with the Galactic Board for such insolence. Charlotte considered forwarding this message to the Empire dignitaries, as a sign that showed how they actually were doing their best to care for their dead. But as she pulled up her contact list, a notification flagged that the main dignitary she'd been speaking with had been killed, leading an assault on another Empire colony. She groaned, as this has been the third time this happened this month. Pulling up a template she had made, Charlotte drafted yet another email to the Empire Embassy on their contested capital planet, checking with who her best contact would be, now that the previous member had been splattered all over some barren moon in the back end of nowhere. She heard the rustling sound and loud, obnoxious and distinctly un like slurp of coffee as Rob stood by her desk. So, he asked, how's it going, Charlotte? You seem a bit tense. Charlotte forced herself to relax, giving a tight smile to not Rob and said, oh, just hanging on, hanging on, boss. Today's been a little less crazy than usual, all things considered. So how about those red socks? <laughs>